Hey there, biology students uh, out there. My name is Laura McGinty. I am a high school biology teacher at Ballard High School, and I am here to welcome you to the very beginning of the inheritance unit. First, I wanna go over a couple of points with how to actually use this PowerPoint in this video. First and foremost, your health and your family come first. Make sure that you are being mindful of your um, mental and physical health and well-being and that you're setting your own work pace that works best for you. If possible, uh, you might find somebody to go through the activities with at the same time as you, uh, communicate with each other through text, email, uh, call if you have questions, just be mindful of the social distancing measures that we need to keep going. Uh, you might also find it helpful as you're going through this video and throughout the course of the unit to have uh, scrap paper and something to write with or a notebook to keep your notes in uh, and just jot down things as you're coming across them. Read through the slides uh, one at a time. Take your time to explore the images and any links that you find or as you're watching the video that you can pause and repeat as often as you need to through this process. If you do come across something that you don't understand, make note of it. Uh, if you're going through the PowerPoint, which slide is it? If you're watching the video about what time frame is it happening? Go through the entire PowerPoint or the video and if you're still confused, email your teacher. Feel free to email your teacher with the question. You can also reach out to someone in your household, talk to uh, a peer who's also going through the uh, process at the same time, uh, and it, just reach out and ask that question. Lastly, when you finish, consider sharing what you've learned with somebody. Um, what is it that you're thinking? Explain your processes. This will help you retain and make sense of the information uh, as you're going along. So here we are, our inheritance initial model. The question that we're gonna be asking is how does a fatal disease persist in a family? The goals that we have are threefold. Identify several things that you notice from a video that we're gonna watch and several questions that you have about sickle cell disease. Second, develop an initial model for how a fatal disease persists in a family. And then third, add details to that model at the organism the cellular, and the atomic molecular scales. So again, our inheritance unit driving question, how does a fatal or a deadly disease persist or keep going uh, in a family? So how is this fatal disease, uh, how does it keep going through this family? So to introduce ourselves, we're gonna watch um, Shania's story. At the time of this video, Shania is a 16-year-old high school student in Batesville, Mississippi. It's about a five-minute video that we'll watch here. Um, and what I need you to do, what I'd like you to do, is take that scrap piece of paper or the notebook that you're tracking, and you're going to make a T-chart to record your notes as you're watching it. On one side, what is it that you notice? What are uh, things that jump out at you about Shania's story? Uh, and then on the other side, what is it that you wonder? Questions that you have... Uh, uh, as you're listening to this story. So without further ado, here is Shania's story. Our football team is like number one in the nation. So the band it has to be full of energy and precise. It's kind of like therapy for me. It makes me feel like I'm normal. Like, I can be normal. Music is life to me. <laughs> Music is life. My name is Shania. I am 16 years old. I live in Basel, Mississippi, and I have sickle cell disease. Even if they don't have a chronic disease, it's hard to be a teenager. They really have to be on top of taking care of their sickle cell disease in addition to being exposed to the regular world and daily activities of going to school, participating in a sport. The first time I actually found out she had a disease was when we were at a contest and I saw her get kind of weak and we were marching off the field and I saw her pass out. She's always just like pushed herself and she's, she just works so hard. Most of our teens, they don't want to be different. They don't want to have to stop and take breaks because it makes them look different or feel different. 
It is a chronic disease and it is very vital to their care that they have a place that they can go that understands their disease. St. Jude is one of those places. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is primarily known as a place that treats children with cancer. But really from our start, we have had a program to treat children with sickle cell disease. It was a devastating disease at that time, but we've made great strides in improving the outlook for children with sickle cell disease. A sickle cell isn't round like a healthy red blood cell. It's more banana shaped, which makes it harder for it to carry oxygen and can cause pain and damage throughout the body. Since sickle cell disease is an inherited blood disorder, it's something our patients are born with, and they have to deal with it every single day. I came to St. Jude when I was around five years old. Growing up with sickle cell, it was really different for me. I couldn't do what other kids did, like go outside. It was a struggle, but I came to see that if I didn't have sickle cell, I probably wouldn't be like the person I am. I don't want sickle cell to define who I am. I don't want that to be a factor like, oh, she has sickle cell, or she can't do that. Just because I have sickle cell it doesn't mean I can't do anything. Sickle cell disease affects about 100,000 Americans, and one out of 400 African-American babies have sickle cell disease. It's a lot of kids. So we've had great success in managing children with sickle cell disease. Greater than 95% will be able to make it through childhood. Our efforts to date, though, have really been in managing their symptoms. Today, in the United States, when children transition into adult care, there is a rapid increase in the number of deaths that occur in this population of patients. This is unacceptable. We need to better educate our patients so that they can play a more proactive role in managing their care as they transition into the adult care environment. Simultaneously, we need to assist the adult care providers so that they know how best to treat the patients with sickle cell disease. nice to have a good group of friends that really understands because some days you're by yourself and some days no one can help you at all you have to fight it by yourself and to be able to have a support group that just understands you it's really a blessing taking pictures for me is kind of like a tradition I do on my birthday it makes me feel loved I do not want to be defined by my illness. Just not someone, you know, that's sick all the time or has this disease. I want to be someone, you know, that makes change. Just an overall amazing leader in person. All right, welcome back from that video. Um, now at this point, what you would... Uh, do is we're going to talk about what we've learned about sickle cell disease. So using the notes from your T-chart, uh, you're going to create a post in the Schoology discussion board for Lesson 1.1 to share your learnings and ideas. Uh, you're going to list as many learnings as you can. You're going to uh, put down any questions that you have about sickle cell disease and then how you think this might actually relate to the things that you've learned previously about genetics. Uh, and think about what you were learning before uh, the closure occurred. So again, three things on the discussion board. List as many things that you've uh, learned from the video, uh, questions that you have about sickle cell disease, and how you think this might relate to things you've learned previously about genetics. Now you have a choice here. You can either pause the video at this point and go into that discussion board and take care of that now while, while it's fresh on your mind, or you can save your notes for later, and then uh, once you've finished watching the video, you can jump in and do that discussion board at this point. Okay. So moving on to this next process, we now have our uh, initial model to look at. And in order to talk about our initial model, we have to talk about how Shania may have gotten sickle cell disease. As we've learned uh, from the video uh, and, and implied in the question, sickle cell disease is often fatal. Uh, and one of the things that we look at in genetics on how to track um, 
uh, traits through families is we use something that's called a pedigree. Uh, and you have two different versions of a pedigree here in the images that you can see. Now, the one on the right-hand side, you can see that we have a, a vague image um, of male versus female. There's a name that is associated, um, birth and death dates uh, as well. The one we're going to look at a little, probably a little bit more often is the one that's on the bottom left here. So let's break this down so we can see what's going on. You can see that this empty square is representative of the male. The empty circle is the female. A filled square or a filled circle is going to be an individual who is affected with a particular uh, disease or trait that we're looking at. When you see uh, a line drawn between um, uh, and the square and a circle, that is a mated pair. Uh, so this is going to be different than uh, a relationship. This is just a mated pair. Uh, you have offspring that are listed in birth order, uh, which you can see right here. We're going to come back to that in a second. You have the numerals, Roman numerals 1 and 2 uh, are examples of the generation. So this is the first generation. Uh, this is the second generation right here. And you can see that this is a mated pair because, again, that line is drawn between the two. The line coming down from it indicates the offspring, and as indicated just a second ago, offspring are listed in birth order. So this person right here uh, is the oldest sister in, uh, in that group, and then uh, she has a younger brother uh, in that group. And they would be listed as Generation 2-1, uh, this is offspring generation 2-2. Two -two. So that's how you read a pedigree uh, to track different traits. And this actually has to do with uh, our initial model and how we look at that. So the next thing we have to consider when we're looking at the question of how fatal diseases persist is through the three scales that we've been looking at all year long. Uh, and the genetics three questions is going to be the organism scale, the cellular scale, and the molecular scale. What are the observable traits? What's going on inside the cells to produce those observable traits? And then at the molecular scale, how is DNA involved in that trait uh, or in those traits that we're going to see? So back to the driving question. How does a fatal disease persist in a family? You're going to complete an initial model. You're using pictures, written explanations to clearly show your ideas. You're going to answer the genetics three questions for the individuals with um, uh, and without sickle cell disease. And you're going to write questions you have about parts of the model that we're not yet able to explain. And remember, this is an initial model. It's OK to not know. Uh, just fill in what you think might uh, be happening. Pull in on. Uh, what you've learned from the past, what you're thinking about, um, just put it down on that paper and get your initial ideas down. So here's the actual model. So in the upper corner here, on the, um, this upper left-hand corner, you have your unit question. You're going to uh, use pictures and words to explain. On this front side is where the pictures are. The back side of the paper is where the questions or the written part is going to be. You're um, going to explain how the information is uh, and instructions are passed down between generations. You're going to use the zoom-ins uh, to explain what's happening at the atomic and molecular level, the cellular level, and um, make sure that you show DNA and proteins as they're involved in the traits. A couple of things that we want to point out as far as how to use this and how to read this. You can see that there's a star here on grandma. This means that uh, grandma is affected. So any person uh, with, with the trait that we're studying, uh, and if anybody uh, else has a star, that person is also affected. Remember with our drawings that we've done in the past, uh, we use this general drawing of a cell. You can see that we have the nucleus here. There's the inside of the cell, primarily cytoplasm, where all the organelles would live. And then our cell membrane, which is this exterior structure here. So we have a general cell. Um, that we would illustrate uh, the information around the DNA, proteins, etc. And then lastly, our trait. This is going to be, this is what we see. Does this person, is this person affected with the disease? Are they not affected with the disease? Whatever trait it is that we are studying, 
uh, at that point in time, that's what you would record there. The written model explanation is on the back, and you can see that we have it broken out in the the three questions. There's the or uh, at the three different scales, we have the organism scale. What is it with a person who uh, does not have sickle cell disease? Um, what observable trait do they have? Um, what's going on inside the cells to possibly produce this trait? Where's the DNA coming from, and how is it involved in the trait? On the other side, you have an individual who does have sickle cell disease, and again, that, that is marked by the star. Same questions, but in response to sickle cell disease and having that trait. Coming to the end here, our summary, checking your understanding. You're gonna identify several things that you've noticed from the video from Shania's story and questions that you have about sickle cell disease. You're developing an initial model for how a fatal disease persists in the family, and you're gonna add details to your model at the organism, cellular, and atomic molecular scales. So what's coming up next? I would consider completing the optional adapted Scientific American SCA NCAA reading. After this, you're going to have lesson 1.2, which is going to get us started in our genetics review. Thanks for your time. Appreciate all your hard work and please take care of yourself and we'll see you on the next time.